Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about the battery management system. Um, this particular one uh, was first used in the Model 3, um, later went on to be used in the Model Y, and is now being used in the new Model S and X, uh, Palladium, Plaid, whatever you want to call it. Um, they have kept the same circuit board and the same housing um, as it was originally designed for the Model 3. Um, this is located under in the Model 3 and Y. This is located under the back seat, under the cover of what Tesla calls the penthouse. And then um, this, there's a big metal cover, and uh, this connector is exposed through that cover and connects to the car. This is the only data connection for the battery pack. This also provides uh, signaling for uh, charging process the high voltage interlock loop, which is a, a safety thing, which I'll talk about in a minute, and the um, startup voltage, because this thing uh, provides its own internal voltage directly from the battery to operate. And the reason it does that is uh, mainly for safety because of uh, it needs to fire the, the pyro fuse in the event of an overcurrent event or uh, something else. And I did, uh, if you haven't seen my video on the pyro fuse, I've, I've done a couple videos on it. I'll provide a link in the description. Uh, be worthwhile to go watch that video. Anyway, inside this housing, it's got uh, one connector here and a bunch of connectors around the periphery. I'll show you what's inside. This circuit board. Pretty big board. It's got a lot of stuff on it. Um, this is the input connector. Uh, we've got two connectors here for the battery management boards. It's a daisy chain, so there's uh, a loop basically that runs to the battery management boards and then back. And if the loop is broken at any given point, it can still communicate from the other side of the loop. And that loop is galvanically isolated, which means there's no direct ele electrical connection between the loop and the rest of this board. And inside these little black things are isolation transformers. I'll go ahead and, well, I'll, 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 I'll wait on the zoom until I give you the overview. We've got our battery management board connectors. This is connected to our current shunt, um, which is just basically a calibrated high current resistor uh, where the, volt, the current across the resistor is turned into a voltage. It, the shunt also contains a temperature sensor to uh, allow temperature compensation to maintain accuracy. This too is galvanically isolated uh, by these four chips here. So uh, th that because that's at high voltage potential, they don't want any electrical connection to the low voltage side of here. Um, we have our high voltage uh, connections to the battery. It's labeled HV Sense. Um, this is also where the power comes in, goes through this black thing, which is a fuse. And there's a switch mode power supply to provide a couple voltages for this board. Um, we've got our connection for the pyro fuse. This is the, the explosive squib that's inside the pyro fuse that uh, detonates it. Um, then we've got uh, connections to all the other uh, low voltage things inside the, inside the pack, uh, such as the contactors for both uh, enabling high voltage and for supercharging. Um, various uh, sensors such as the um, water sensor in the pack and some other things like that. Um, and that's about it. So let me zoom in so we can get some close-up action on this. Uh, apologize for the glare. Uh, this board is conformally coated. That's this uh, silver pla or you know shiny plastic you're seeing on here, like a varnish, and that's uh, designed to protect against moisture condensing on the board, causing corrosion. Since this is a safety critical system, it's important that uh, this be well protected. So you got our, our input connector here, which is labeled vehicle interface. Note that this is out of a newer car. Uh, it says copyright 2017, even on the plaid, it's the same board. So there are vehicle interface connection. This uh, large processor here is made by NXP, uh, which used to be Freescale. It's an SPC5, which is a power PC architecture. Um, the full, I'll put the full part numbers for everything on here in the description if you want to look it up. Um, but uh, this, this serves the function of the um, 
the main BMS, basically. It does all the calculations, watches the cell voltages, um, controls the power state, all that stuff. Um, but it, basically, it, it deals with the actual uh, logic of battery management. Then there's another little processor over here. This is a TI-DSP. Um, uh, part numbers in the in the description as well, and this is the what they call the high voltage processor. Um, it uh, kind of deals with the control of the contactors. Also, these both uh, affect safety, so either one can uh, order the pyrofuse to open. And in addition, um, the the pyrofuse is hooked to the current shunt with hardware such that. Even if these processors were completely not on the board, um, the pyrofuse can be blown uh, if there's too much current going through the shunt. So a gross overcurrent will blow, uh, blow the pyrofuse instantly, whereas you can also tailor the trip curve um, in software if you want it to, to blow it sooner if like the inverter fails or whatever to avoid damage. There's a bunch of little uh, jelly bean parts on here for signal conditioning, power conditioning, voltage regulation. Um, this little chip here is made by Bosch. Um, uh, the, the part numbers are inconsistent, but I found a what's likely uh, the closest part. And this is designed to drive the pyrofuse squibs. It takes uh, 25 volts in that's produced by the switch mode power supply. It's stored in this big electrolytic capacitor, which serves as a reservoir because uh, they want to ensure that that squib reliably fires. So you can see there's two high current traces coming out of there that work its way down to the pyro loop connection through this uh, isolation transformer. And that's done because once the pyro fires, uh, the plasma that's formed inside the, um, that could be formed inside the pyrofuse when it blows is electrically conductive and they don't want that high voltage coming back up here. So they have an isolation transformer for it. But yeah, anyway, uh, that circuit uh, is designed to fire the pyro and also provides diagnostics so that uh, the uh, higher level processors can ensure that the pyrofuse is still workable, like the squib isn't gone open or short or something like that. And we have the um, low voltage interface to all this stuff in the penthouse. There's some FETs here for driving the coils on those contactors. There's a total of four contactors, two for uh, high voltage plus and minus to enable the high voltage out of the pack, and two plus and minus for supercharging that enable the uh, charging port to directly connect to the pack so the external uh, DC voltage can come in to uh, do supercharging. Um, as I mentioned, there's galvanic isolation here um, for isolating the current shunt. There's some signal processing here for the current shunt. Uh, I believe it converts it into SPI or serial, and then uh, that goes across to uh, the high voltage processor for measurement. There's some empty pads here. These are for uh, testing and programming, like JTAG, uh, if you want to know what JTAG is. Um, I'll provide a link in the description, but uh, probably used during development. Uh, I doubt they use these during programming because they're not populated or they might use a bed of nails on them. And I, as I talked about, these are the interfaces to the actual battery modules, the battery management board or BMB. And there's two loops and they have two ICs here on these two loops. Uh, this top one is, uh, Tesla calls it Batman. Um, and uh, you can't see it here, um, but there's actually a little uh, man in a cape uh, logo. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can get a better picture of it. And then this is Robin, and these uh, handle the interface to the BMB boards. Um, and they're, they use the same chips on the BMB boards um, for actually reading the voltages and balancing, and I'll talk about that in a minute. We got our proud American flag logo. And there's really uh, nothing of interest on the bottom except more conformal coating, some protection diodes, that kind of stuff. So let's uh, zoom out. We'll get a battery management board here. This is one of four modules that you would find in a Model 3 or Y. 
Um, this one is more recent and there's a big difference between the older boards and the newer boards. Um, but this one uh, sustained some damage. Um, there's corrosion on here. The what water got in this pack from after an accident. The car was crushed, and you know rainwater I think got in there and damaged this one. Um, what's different is we've got our two uh, Batman ICs here, and the Batman ICs um, connect to all these voltage taps that you see here um, and read all the voltages. And in addition they allow small loads to be put on each tap in the pack to balance the batteries. So that works basically by knocking the ones that are a little too much, too high uh, down so that they're in line with the ones that are slightly lower capacity, ensuring the pack stays balanced. And again, you see these uh, galvanic isolation transformers here to ensure there's no electrical connection to the loop. There's loop in and loop out. Um, and then there's another transformer to isolate the two sections because these are going to be probably at different voltage potentials. Uh, there's some small passives, some fuses on here because these things draw their power directly from the pack when they're running. Um, they go to sleep once the communication stops. Um, again, these are custom. I think they're made by uh, linear technology for Tesla. There's some parts they sell that are uh, uh, definitely not custom that you can buy that are very similar but I think Tesla customized these and had them specially made. Now what's different is on the earlier boards, and I'll see if I can uh, put a picture here, here, here in, the, in editing, um, had Batman and Robin ICs on this. And the reason they did that is for redundancy. The Batmans were considered primary um, and the Robins were considered backup. And the Robins could not do balancing, but could sense the voltages. So in the event one of these were to fail, um, they could still operate the car, uh, you know, at least in a limp mode uh, with the Robin sensing. I think what happened is they found that these are, ne they never fail. They're, they're very reliable. Um, so they just cost down the whole thing and eliminated the Robin ICs. Um, inside the plaid modules, um, they have a similar IC. It no longer has the Batman logo on it, uh, and it has actually some linear uh, markings on it as well. But um, they uh, use these alone also in the plaid. They don't have the Robin ICs. But same basic architecture, a loop. Um, in the plaid, they have a series of boards that run down the whole side of the module. Um, in the Model 3 and Y, there's four of these, one on each of the modules uh, that do slightly different uh, voltage inputs. Um, like number numbers of of series strings inputs is what I mean by that, and uh, yeah, that's how uh, sensing works. Um, the BMS can, like I said, uh, affect balancing by telling these to switch on small loads, which are small resistors that can regulate each tap in the pack to bring down the high ones. <clears throat> that's about all I got for the battery management system. Obviously, there's a lot of proprietary software inside the, the, the battery management IC. This is a pretty powerful PowerPC uh, microcontroller. Um, there's a lot of software in there. This is uh, some of Tesla's secret sauce, as it were. Oh, oh I forgot to mention on the BMB, there's also temperature sensing. There are several thermistors on this board, and these are normally coupled with uh, some thermal compound directly to the uh, top of the pack. And I think they're basically sensing like input and output temperature on each side of the module this way. Um, I, I think they might have had more sensors in the older packs and then realized they didn't need them. So this one's only got two. Um, yeah, I guess that's that's about it. Uh, uh, this, Like I said earlier, this thing does have its own power supply. So even if you disconnect the, the car side of the pack, the, this thing can still blow the pyro if you use. Um, so don't think that if you've disconnected the 12 volt battery that um, this thing can be completely dead. This thing can store enough charge to fire the pyro if you use. So um, take very, very good care if you're opening the pack or working on it, or if you're welding around it. If you, uh, if you weld, um, it could, could accidentally fire the pyro if you use. If you have any other questions, uh, please leave them in the comments below. I'll try to answer most of them. 
If you'd like to support my channel financially, there's a link in the description. I'd appreciate it. And obviously, um, give the YouTube algorithm its due. Uh, subscribe and, and like if you like the video so I can keep making them. Uh, that's all I have for you today. Everyone take care.